Okay, so just had some really interesting news from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and uh, I was alerted to it with this comment. So, Raspberry Pi Foundation just announced on their Facebook page that the 64-bit Pi OS is out of beta. So, thanks very much to Was It A Cat I Saw on YouTube. And uh, if we go to the Raspberry Pi story, uh, over the past year we've been training a beta of Raspberry Pi OS in glorious 64-bit. Now it's time to open it up to a wider audience. So it's been in beta up until now, and in fact the last couple of days I've been trying out the latest beta version, uh, which seems to be the version they've released anyway, uh, and it's excellent. Really, really impressed with it. Love the performance of it. So the second part of this video, after I've done this introduction, will be uh, from the last couple of days me trying it out. Everything still stands, but where I say beta, obviously ignore that. It's not in beta anymore. So we scroll down through the ARM V8 architecture, which encompasses the 64-bit Arch 64 architecture and associated A64 instruction set, was first introduced in the Raspberry Pi line with the Raspberry Pi 3 back in 2016. So we've been able to run 64-bit operating systems on our flagship products, and many third-party operating systems are available. However, we continue to build Raspberry Pi OS releases on the 32-bit Raspbian platform, aiming to maximize compatibility between devices and to avoid customer confusion. And uh, you can see here that various devices are 32-bit, but uh, the 02W, the Pi 3, and the Pi 4 are all 64-bit. Now, I've done a separate video, and I mention it later on in the older video that I've done, uh, which compares 64-bit and 32-bit, and the 64-bit OS definitely performs better, but the issue we've had is that everybody writes programs for the 32-bit version, or converts for the 32-bit version, which was the official. So now, uh, we have 64-bit, and it's officially supported. It's also available in Raspberry Pi Imager now as well. Uh, so if I go into Imager, and there's no mention of beta on it either, so choose OS, and if we uh, pick Raspberry Pi OS, scroll down, you can see 64-bit. So there's the light version, and there's the full version as well. The light version is only 0.4 gigabytes, so that's, yeah, no desktop environment on that one. But we've come to realize there are reasons to choose a 64-bit operating system over a 32-bit one. Compatibility is a key concern. Many closed-source applications are only available for ARM 64. Lots of emulators like 64-bit, which would be great for us and open source ones aren't fully optimized for the ARM HF port. It mentions about performance ben benefits uh, on the A64, and I've definitely seen that in my test. And also they mention about being able to address more RAM. You've been able to use the full eight gig of RAM, but it uses it in a different way. Now it will be able to fully utilize it. And they have a fix here for uh, the 64-bit version of Chromium because it doesn't support Widevine, which I found out, uh, which you'll see later on in the video. Um, but there is a fix here, let sudo apt install Chromium browser and then return to the 64-bit version. So you can switch between the two. I mean, if you're gonna use it for Netflix on a regular basis, I guess you just use a separate OS uh, or Netflix works very well in Android. But uh, nice to see that they've addressed that. Yeah, great news, right. So. This next part of the video is the bit that I've recorded over the last couple of days, but it's still talking about this official 64-bit version. Great news. And also this could mean that we get a 64-bit version of Twister OS. Okay, so Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye came out in November, and uh, it had a bit of a rocky start. The compatibility wasn't great, the performance wasn't great, but this 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS I've been trying for the last couple of days is really good. It's just been updated. So let's switch into screen capture and have a look. Now it's worth mentioning this version is still in beta. Uh, if I click on accessories and go to Raspberry Pi Imager, you can install the 32-bit version from the Raspberry Pi Imager tool. So you can see here, 32-bit version, 28th of the first, uh, but we also have versions in here as well. But there are no 64-bit versions because they're still in beta, they keep it from this tool. Um, but all you have to do is go to downloads.raspberrypi.org and scroll down and you'll find a Raspberry Pi OS ARM64 and also an ARM64 full version which comes with more of the apps but I'm just using the standard version so if we click on that, click on images and click on the latest version which is this one here, 28th of the 1st. So it came out on the same date as the 32-bit one and it definitely has loads of improvements in performance. It, it just feels like a completely different operating system than the first one they released. And if we have a look at this page, operating system images, uh, and scroll down, uh, it doesn't mention the 64-bit version. I don't know where you find the release notes on that, um, but if I click on here, so there are a load of changes uh, since the last update, which was back in October. So if we look through, 
So they changed something with the mouse acceleration, added some options in Raspberry Config to switch composite video, to switch to legacy camera mode, because there was lots of incompatibilities with Bullseye before uh, and the camera, and added an option to set the resolution for headless connections, that's interesting. And loads of bug fixes in here as well. Now video playback at 1080 full screen are found to be very good, uh, so if I click on this video, now when it starts playing you often find it's a little bit choppy but it definitely settles down and uh, even at full screen uh, I put on stats for nerds and I left it on for or several hours and uh, it was coming out really well. The thing is when you put stats for nerds on first of all it drops frames when it's launching it uh, but once it's running I've found that it's working very very well. Let's pop it in full screen uh, again it will drop frames when it goes to full screen but it, it just sorts itself out so after it's been playing for a little bit uh, it doesn't seem to drop frames anymore and it looks pretty decent. Which is definitely something that wasn't wasn't happening before. Uh, so the performance was really bad before. Now if we try just an ordinary web search, let's try Hot UK Deals. You can see that it comes up. The web browser seems to work very well. I did a test where I compared the 32-bit version and the 64-bit version on the older one on uh, on Buster. This is Bullseye, and uh, the 64-bit version performed better on loads of different things. Certainly, transferring files, launching things, various different things. It was it was better overall. So you can see I can scroll around here. Uh, let's do a search for Raspberry Pi and see what that comes up with. There you go. So you can see it's pretty pretty snappy. If I open up another one, uh, I did find with Netflix that uh, Widevine is not supported in this version. It is on the 32-bit version. That said, I haven't tried it in Bullseye, uh, but they added Widevine support a while ago, and so it has been good. You can see it it shows me logged in, but if I click on my profile and try and launch something, so let's try this and play. There you go, so it comes up with the wide vine problem. Uh, I did try a couple of fixes, but because this is the 64-bit version, they didn't work, they're there for the 32-bit version. And you do definitely find this running, this 64-bit OS, uh, it just isn't as well supported, but it depends what you're using it for. So if you're using it for web browsing, uh, so if I type in BBC Sport, and using it for writing images to SD cards or SSDs or things like that. It definitely performs really well as an operating system. Uh, I've tried gaming on it as well, uh, so I've been using PyApps and PyKiss. I ran this script to uh, install a load of things on there. I've got a separate video on that. This is a long old script, Raspberry Pi Imager, Gparted, PyApps, PyKiss, all sorts of things are installed in it. But let's launch PSP and show how that runs. Grab my controller and try a bit of Grand Theft Auto. And I found the audio was decent, um, even with the music. Obviously, I can't play the music in this, but um, yeah, fan performance was really, really nice. I'm running this at 2147. I'll show my settings in a minute. Oh, that didn't go so well. But yeah, definitely, I was impressed with this. I thought it was working fine. And I was just using default settings, haven't changed anything on that. You can see I've got Conkey running here, uh, that installed with Pi Apps. And uh, so we've got all our information displayed on here. Uh, the PSP emulator, I can't remember if I used PyKiss or PyApps to install that, but it works fine. Um, Half-Life, I didn't have the original files. I've got them saved somewhere and I can't remember where it is. Uh, the GameCube emulator didn't work. So this is some of the things you're gonna get running a 64-bit operating system. Again, it's in beta, but depending on what you're using it for, I would definitely recommend it. It, uh, it does feel really stable. And when I was looking for these Half-Life files last night, uh, I was trying various different memory sticks and uh, SSD drives, and I was plugging in and unplugging. The stability of this system, it hasn't crashed once, and I've been really messing about with it uh, and installing all sorts of things. And uh, yeah, really, really impressed with it. You can see I've customized it a bit. I've moved the taskbar, changed the color, changed the background. Uh, added the temperature, just played around with it and used it as a wooden operating system and uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with it. I need to try out the 32-bit OS um, because that also wasn't working great when I first tried it, but with all these fixes and that being the main operating system that's supported on the Pi, uh, it's, it's going to be great. So I'm going to give that a try. I might do a separate video on it or I might mention it in Pi News. So let's try plugging in a USB 3 USB stick 
and uh, see what it does with that. I'm already running the operating system from an SSD on USB 3. You can see it's come up straight away. So if I open that up and uh, we pick, let's pick quite a big file. So say a PS2 game. So Dave Mirror, how big's that? 1.4 gig. So if we copy that to the desktop just to show how fast it happens. Uh, and while it's doing it, if I click on something here and put, in, put Gini on the screen, oh, you can see, I mean, it, it's pretty much finished already. Look. It is very, very quick. It is definitely quicker than the 32-bit in doing that. You can see that's launched. Let's launch something else. So VLC, let's launch image view. Maybe we'll try, oh, it slowed down a little bit. Uh, so games, uh, so let's try Minecraft. I haven't launched this yet. I installed it last night, but I haven't tried it. Uh, but you can see everything seems to be working. Continue, so there's VLC, there's image viewer. Uh, this is to do with Minecraft, so let's just click OK and OK and go with whatever settings it wants to do. OK, so let's log into Minecraft. gone a bit slow now. I mean this is to be expected. I am definitely messing about with this. There we go. So start game. Create new. Creative mode. And let's just see what happens. Yeah, that seems to be running nice and smooth. I installed this with PyApps. This is the modded version of Minecraft. Yeah, that's working well. So let's quit out of that. Let's close some of these things down. But you can see it's nice and stable. It does definitely seem to be working well. Working with my NAS drive seems to be really stable as well. So if I do go and network, this is my Western Digital drive. So connect that. That's connected to my network. Public and connect. And let's try something. Let's try copying a PSP game over. So ROMs, PSP. So let's try Ape Escape, copy that, 170 megabytes and paste. It just, it just seems to work really, really well, really stable, really fast. It's a shame that it's at this stage isn't as compatible as the 32-bit version because the performance I would say is better, although I haven't tried the 32-bit version of Bullseye yet. So I think it's running great. I'm really impressed with it. It's definitely uh, turned it around from when Bullseye first came out and uh, it's definitely worth using now. Uh, just hope that more compatibility comes with 64-bit operating systems on the Pi in the future. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.